let me share this with you. I'm not sure if I have ever shared with you how my name Joseph came about, but uh, we are five siblings from father and mother because I have others that are only from father and others that are only from mothers. Mother. That's a long story for later. But um, the name of my four others Elizach, Eliani, Eliach, Elio, Elizach. Guess how my name was supposed to start? Yeah. Yeah. My name was to be Adder, a Hebrew Bible name. When I was born, I was born with a very horrible pneumonia problem as a baby. The doctors did everything they could, kept my mother in the hospital there for a few days, and then they told her, he will not live, not even five days. And I am, we are sorry. You have to go home, there is nothing we can do. Here are these medications. Let him go through it. This will help him and help you to sleep. At night, you need to sleep because he will be too hard for you to take care of, crying and all this and that. Give this medication, whatever those drugs were. And I'm sorry. And my mother went home crying. They said, why register him? He's going to die. That was um, March 2nd, 68. So March is coming up. Don't forget. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, March 2nd, 68. So I went, my mother was sent home with that baby. She said that I was blue, my collar, and I didn't move. She brought that thing wrapped around with cloth. I didn't move. I didn't. She, she could barely notice me breathing in my chest if she paid close attention in my, in my chest because she would see moving a little bit. Here's nat natural remedies. <laughs> My aunt, her oldest sister, lived in the farm, told her, come then to live with us until he dies. And she said, if those medications are only to help you go through the night and help the baby die, let him then not use it, and I will stay up and help you. But I'd like to make some teas from some herbs and rub on his lips and help him. So she did the first day, the second day, the third day. By the fourth day, I would open my mouth and welcome that tea, whatever it was. That my aunt used to go around the, the land talking about edibles, that you learn how to use them. She knew them. She grew up that way. And she would collect little herbs here and there, make that tea, and give to that baby. The fifth day came, and he was reacting, responding to the tea. And the sixth day, and the seventh day, but not moving at all. The eighth day, the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, 17 days. He opened his hands for the first time on the 17th day. So much so that it was kind of uh, nasty. They had to clean it. 
and he was moving his arms. From March 2, 17 days later, is March 19, St. Joseph's Day. In her Catholic faith, she said, St. Joseph saved him. His name shall be Joseph. And my father went and registered me as Joseph. Do not live, he will not live, not even five days, being, turning 55 this next March 2nd. My daughter calculated that is about uh, 20 something thousand times more than five. It was like she calculated like some thousands of times more than five. Five days. God has been good. I've that pneumonia in my lungs have tried to show up back again in the last uh, in uh, uh, four years ago, two thousand and no. 2017, uh, six years ago, five, six years ago. But it was just a little wake up call uh, because of uh, I got a cold, an infection from a hot water springs in Brazil when I went to visit there. And uh, kind of a, it caused a, a if, if to, not to flare up. Because to flare up is because something existent gets worse, but there is nothing in there. But because of the scars, it kind of uh, somehow, and I was a little scary. I was treated by the hospital there in West Hartford, and this pneumologist, pneumologist, pulmonologist. He was, and he is the best. He's an Indian, um, Pakistani man. He's a young man in his 40s. He is known for being the best in New England. I was sent from uh, Willamette Hospital to another hospital, to my, my family doctors. They sent me there. He said, you gotta, he, he has to see you. You have to go see him. I went to see him. I, went, I asked for the best. So when I was there with him, he told me all the process of all that he would do to make sure, did all kind of uh, tests you can imagine. And then I told him, listen, um, I also plan on going to a place called Uchi Pines in Alabama to, be, to go through a cleansing, total cleansing and with all these remedies, all, all these natural things. And he said this to me. Yeah, yeah, that you do what you can, but uh, I don't recommend any of those things. We don't work with those things. And he said, my mother believes all the, that stuff. But in the real world, professional world, we, uh, there is no, nothing prove, proven about those things. So he did all the blood. Maybe he took, I don't know, 10 gallon of, um, well, so many tubes. Um, you know how they do. One for this, one for that, one for this. And I, are you living anything in? So many little tubes. I think you were like five of those. For this test, that test, that test, that other test, that other test. They didn't know what it was. It was related to the lungs. They have found five nodules, seven nodules, seven nodules in my lungs. I said, well, okay. Did all the tests, and I went to Alabama. I went there for two terms. Each one was like uh, two weeks. I stayed for four weeks. I don't know how it was, I stayed for 40 days. Interesting, 40 days, the Bible, 40 days, and all those things. 
I did all that they told me, even, even more. I never walked in all my life as much as I did there. <laughs> I walked, and mo what they told me to do, I always did twice and many times, three times more. When I didn't have anything to do, I was not doing tests, no water bath, no water fever, this, water that, like hot water, and you go, and then icy water. <laughs> I came to this place to die. And then, oh. 40 days later, I come back. I'm feeling strange, like strangely strange. Because it feels like I am walking into my head like way up high, not getting tired, and I'm sleeping like, I go like, I don't know what happened there. Strange. It was time to do the tests all over again, to see. Because they had to do those tests, come, with up, come up with some conclusion, do those other tests. Pastor Dombrowski, uh, at the time, he and his wife, his kids, my family, they went there also to be there with us, with me, to the hospital there. <laughs> I asked him and he went. Uh, I'm just mentioning him because you know him well. As a, 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 a way of a really convincing you that what I'm telling you, it is true. <laughs> I didn't need, I didn't need, but I, I know you believe me. When I was there, they did all the tests and everything, and he said, you know what? I don't know what you did, but the nodules are gone. There is, there are two that, we can see, we can barely see with the microscope. And they are in a stage of shh, disappearing. It's like uh, all the cases we have, if not all, most of them, we have to go through all the biopsy. That is an int a intrusion that can, may cause you more trouble later. If it is a cancerous cell that is developing, and if you cut it and upset it, it may grow even faster. That's the problem with biopsy, you all know. And that is the risk, and he explained that to me. And so you don't need any biopsy, because there was a time for me to go to the exam and do the biopsy. You don't need any of those. Whatever you did, wherever place that you said in, in the state there, Continue to do that. And I told him this. Would you do me a favor? He said, sure, what is it? If I can do, I promise you I will do. I said, you promise me that you will do. Because it's something very easy for you to do. You go home, call your mom, and say, you are right. <laughs> and he laughed. Ah. He said, she's going to love it. I will tell her. She's going to love it. Because here I am. Went to school all these years. Have all this experience. And I told you something. And now what my mother raised us with. All those herbs and all those things. She is right. I will tell her. I promise you. So what a blessing. God has been blessed us so much. Amen. Going to the message, what should we do with all these blessings that God has given us? And I say us because I am not unique or not even close to be the only one. You all here have been blessed in a Amen. mighty way, in one way or another. Amen. Many times we do not even know that we have been blessed. But if you are given the chance, and I recommend that we someday head elder, come up with a church service that people will tell their testimonies only. Amen. Only their testimonies. And it, this is the spirit of prophecy, Ellen White says, that Amen. we should have that period for them to give their testimony of their faith, how God, and be brief, not take so much time as I am. <laughs> First Corinthians 6, verse 20. For you have been bought 
with a price. That's how expensive you are. Therefore, glorify God in your body. So you have been bought for a very expensive price. The price was the very life of the Son of God. By the way, a little nickname that Ellen White, a little, a little terminology that Sister White gives him, the majesty of heaven. The majesty of heaven came down and paid the price for you. And when you say, when you think of you, please don't think of you as a you people, the church, God's people. No, but you as the individual. You. And it is not a theological, making beautiful sermon type of approach from a pastor to say you for you to feel like better. No, no. It is theologically correct that it was you individually that Jesus died for. Amen. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. But may I never be. May, that, may, that, may it never be that I would boast. Do we boast? Except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I don't live uh, to the world anymore. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. For, uh, because I have been. See Paul is saying not we have been. Uh, all of us. But I. He is saying. He said that before I. Okay. I am crucified. To the world in the world. To me it's a personal. For I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live. In the flesh. I live by faith. In the son of God. Who loved me. And gave himself up for me. Do you want to have a very humbling experience that will also bring you to your highest spiritual level? Here's a homework. Do it if you want to receive a huge blessing and you will be changed. Read the book of Acts carefully. Paying attention to what happened to who Paul was and what happened to him. And then go home and read Acts of the Apostles. Especially chapters 47, 48, 49, 50, 52. 48 to 52 will suffice. What that man went through. What he suffered. And how he died. He died a glorious death. A happy death. Life had no meaning, no value for him. Those people that crucified him. Uh, that, 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 that uh, uh, beheaded him. Okay. Some of them. Could not handle it. And surrender their lives to Christ. Noblemen. From the Jewish. Priesthood. As well as the Romans. Ellen White speaks of a. Uh, his face being so calm in such a peace that they looked at him trying to find, intently trying to find in his face a sign of stress. And they could not find, but they found, they saw the face of an angel. They could not understand. Whatever this that they called the sect of the Jews. Christianity was known as the sect of the Jews. Whatever this is that makes people to be like him. I want it. Amen. And he died and many were converted. M many people that were noble people. Even Agrippa, the king who happened to be a Jew, by the way, he was working for the Romans as a king there. In a, he was a Jew. He said, stop, Paul, stop, stop. Your words, you almost convinced me to, 
to be a Christian. And then Paul goes on, I wish that not only you, but everyone here accept with these chains. Hmm. Knowing that you have been bought for su by such an expensive price, what should you do then? Let's go through it quickly. Jeremiah 9.23, Thus says the Lord, Let not a wise man boast on his wisdom. And let not the mighty man boast on his might. Let not a rich man boast on his riches. And Jeremiah 9.24 now. But let him who boasts, boast of this. That he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. God, God delights in loving kindness and justice. He, it makes him tremendously happy to bless you. That's what it is in a simple language. However, the church is made up, and I am so sorry. Many people, uh, you know the safest way for those preachers here and on those who are, aspire to be preachers, when you preach, use the Bible and the Bible alone and the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of prophecy alone, um, then you will be safe. If people have any questions later, especially when you use PowerPoint and so on, you'll say, well, uh, d didn't you read together with me? That's all. And so um, that's why I, I know and I like uh, illustrations that make people laugh. But I try to avoid those as much as possible because they can distract and we have only this little period to share a solid message and go home knowing you know I, I was good I went to church at least that it, it was good that I, it was a blessing that I went to church to feel that it was worthy spirit of prophecy there are two types of um, members in the church and all of them have the chance to be a blessing Acts of the Apostles, page 558, 508, and 58. John and Judas are representatives of those who profess to be Christ's followers. We all profess to be Christ's followers, right? John and Judas are representatives of, of us. Both these disciples had the same opportunities to study and follow the divine pattern. Both were closely associated with Jesus and were privileged to listen to his teaching. Each possessed serious defects of character, and each had access to the divine grace that transforms character. And this is exactly what is happening to all of us. Same, same story, but in the lives of these two. But while one in humility was learning of Jesus, the other revealed that he was not a doer of the word, but a hearer only. And to hear is nice. It's very pleasing. Isn't it like nice to hear a good sermon, the message, and go like, wow, wow. It is good. It is like a... So he was enjoying the blessing of hearing only, but not a, a doer. One daily dying to self and overcoming sin was sanctified through the truth. The other Resisting the transforming power of grace and indulging selfish desires was brought into bondage to Satan. In the next page, Ellen White goes on to say, Such transformation of character as seen in the life of John is ever the result of communion with Christ. We need to have that communion with Christ. We need to work. We need to eat. We need the social life to go see some friends. We need, we need, we need to even watch some programs on TV, uh, if you like it, uh, be informed. And, you know, we need all those things. We need to go out and buy clothes, buy food. We need all those things. We need them. We need to sleep. We need just to have time to relax for ourselves. Yes. But what we need the most is Christ, is to have a communion with him. That time needs to be set aside. We need to make an effort to take that little time aside. Individually, I recommend. 
I recommend that each individual of the family takes time to read for himself. Then they can worship together, singing and sharing with each other, and read together another thing, or the same, the same uh, information. Communion with Christ, John. There may be marked defects in the character of an individual, as there were marked defects in the character of John. Yet, when he becomes a true disciple of Christ, the power of divine grace transforms and sanctifies him. And that is exactly what happened to John. Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, he is changed from glory to glory until he is like him whom he adores. John we all know he died, is the only one that, that we know that died a natural death way there lonely in the island of Patmos. It's a, a, an island off the shore into the Mediterranean Sea, all by himself, living there, dreaming with the Holy Land, Jerusalem. But you know what? God came to him and said, John, let me show you the real Jerusalem. Let me show you these things. And then you see the book of Revelation beginning with, And I heard a voice that spoke behind me. And then I, I heard. Then I saw. Then I heard. And then I saw. If you read the book of Revelation, you may not know, but it is throughout the entire book. I saw and I heard. And I saw and I heard. This conversation of God telling him of the new, the, the real deal. The Jerusalem. And he describes it with all the gates there in chapter 20, 21. The gates of the city, all these beautiful stones and the saints. He saw every single one of them. He saw them at the end of time. He saw all that whole picture. If you would call it like a movie. But it was like this screen and he saw, and I saw, and I saw this, and I heard, and I saw. And he, he writes it down. He writes it to who? To us. To those living at the end. To you and me. Wow, wow, wow. Matthew chapter 18, verses 2 and 3. Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Shortly I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Being innocent, willing to learn, being, having the heart soft, open to learn. To learn from who? Oh, only if it is Doug Bachelor, Mark Fenley, or, or pastor somewhere. Le learning to uh, willing to learn from that nobody member that cuts the grass. If you do not know what he knows, he is a good source of information for you to learn. Maybe do not learn all the theological terminologies and words and Hebrew words that even the pastor use, but to use to learn how to be meek and trusting. Why not? Maybe that is what I, I need to learn. Whoever receives the little, one little child like this in my name receives me. Whoever learns from those, they, they are learning from me. From, from that, how do you call a person that cut the grass landscaper? Or from, or from the theologian from somewhere in general conference. You are learning from me, from Jesus. No matter who. The, 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 the emphasis is in your willingness. Matthew 18, 6. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better to him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. There are two messages in this text here. Jesus is using these, this example to teach his disciples to be humble and meek okay, and not cause the one who has the information, the, the simple poor man that cuts the grass 
not abuse him and disrespect him and so on. Because if you do that to him, it would be as if you would tie a huge millstone around your neck and be thrown into the depth of the sea. Uh, he is using that for illustration for the adults, but at the same time, he is giving a more in-depth theology here that, you know, Jesus always, in the Bible, the entire Bible, always used messages that had an impact on the person that is hearing it right there, and also had an kind of an underlying theology behind it that both ways, you can agree, it is the truth. For example, to make one of these little ones to fall, uh, um, to, to, to stumble, stump, stumble, to sin, to sin, to sin, yeah, to sin. Some translation says stumble and so on. Um, it is related to mistreating children as well. Yeah. Mistreating in a very bad way. And uh, it would have been better if a huge millstone were uh, tied around their neck and be thrown into the depth of the sea. I have seen many millstones in my life of all kind. They are never smaller than this. And they have even bigger than, than me. But somehow, even the small one is very heavy. It's very heavy. Try to tie one of... No, don't, don't do I didn't say it. But if, if, if someone would try to tie one of those around their neck and try to swim, that's... Death. Don't do that. Okay. Now, this language, to be thrown into the depth of the sea, to be cast into the sea, there is one other instance that their expression is used. Jesus was so wise, so intelligent. Of course, he's the one that gave both messages. In Revelation, it says that God will throw Babylon as a millstone into the depth of the sea. To mistreat those little children, you would be like, you, you would pay the price, exactly the price that Babylon will pay at the end. And it will be by God himself. Moving on. For us to be humble, let's stay with the topic here. I went to the side a little bit. Let's stay with the topic. Matthew 18, 10. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. There are angels taking notes of if we are really willing to serve him and be humble and meek. We have a serious responsibility before God, the responsibility of being humble like little children. That's the concept, and that's the message that we want to come across here, which is from Jesus, that you will be humble and open to be taught by him, just like John. Both John and Judas had the opportunity. They had the same offer. Same, both of them. Both of them. But John understood, and he humbled himself. It was not easy. It is not easy to humble yourself. It is a sacrifice. But it is a sacrifice that will turn into a huge blessing to all of us. Amen. Matthew 19, verse 13. Then little children were brought, brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. Okay? And in Matthew 19, 14. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me. And do not forbid them, for, uh, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. All that he wants to do with those who are humble like little children is to bless them. He will bless them and send them away. It will be to bless them. We may not think, I may not think that uh, to humble myself is... is a, Something I should do. But God requires that as the only requirement to receive his blessings. Do you know why it is the only requirement to receive his blessings? You may say, well, to keep the commandment in the Sabbath, we receive a blessing there. But guess what comes first in order for you to be obedient to his commandments? To the Sabbath, to the health message, and so on. What comes first is meekness. You ought to be humble. 
and accept. Maybe you do not understand why, as the world out there and keep asking the question, well, it's only a day in the week, so what difference it makes if it is the seventh, the sixth, the fourth, the first. Re humanly reasoning, thinking, that makes sense, right? What's the difference? Is a day if I keep Wednesday really well kept in honor to worship God and won't he accept it? You know, um, that's the way the, the world reason. There is a reason for the seventh day. There is a process and, and a, a, a step that was followed all the way through there. Okay? All the way through there. What was created on the first day of the week? Light. Okay? What's, what was created on the second day of the week? What? The exp expansion above and the ex expansion below. What was created on the third day of the week? The earth with all the vegetables, the, f the food, the grass. What was created on the fourth day of the week? So we have here light, expansion below and above, vegetables and green trees and so on. On the fourth day of the week was the, the star, the moon, the sun. And on the fifth day of the week, what was created? The birds and the fish. What was created on the sixth day of the week? The animals, all the creeping things. And at the end of that day, as the crowning creation of God, Adam and Eve were created. The elements of creation are God creating all the various steps and you as a human being learning from them. So we see this picture on the first day. On the first, on the first day, goes with the fourth day, sun, moon, and star. The second day, expansion below and expansion above, goes with the fifth day, which is birds in the air and fish for that. On the third day was the vegetation with all the dry ground and the, the food. And then the sixth day, the animals and man, and so on. All of them go to each other, Amen. together, at a, as a beautiful pattern, a beautiful blessing. Then there are two things left, God creating and the Sabbath day. So naturally, they have to be to each other. You, you, you are not left to think in any other way, only to think that. The seventh day is left, and the Creator. They are for each other. And that's the way we are supposed to see it. And that cannot be denied. There is no theology against it. So to learn and see that God has blessed us in all that light, so that we may humble and learn with Him, even though we may not understand all the theology and so on, but to believe that it comes from Him, He says, it is so, so let it be so. So we should humble ourselves and become like little children and open to learn from him. Psalm chapter 51 verse 17. The sacrifices of God are what? A broken and what? A contrite heart. That God will not despise. That is something that God will welcome. And he will be Happy to bless those. We are not to become like children, like, um, we are not to become only like, like to become like children uh, in our responsibility uh, before one another, but also um, in how we approach and address and refer ourselves and, up and, and come to God. He am I? The Hebrew word for getting on your knees to pray is really a translation 
that was created later. But the real meaning of the Hebrew word is to fall flat on your face. The idea is you are from the dust of the ground. You go to God and you recognize that you are just dust of the ground. If you live and breathe, it is because of him. That's how reverent we should be when we go to him. Acts of the Apostles, again, page 555, and we are coming to a closing here. The greatest praise that men can bring to God is to what? Is to become consecrated channels through whom he can work. Time is rapidly passing into eternity. He asks for the whole heart give it to him it is his both by creation and by redemption many of us believe that it is his by creation alone because that we cannot we cannot deny by redemption we cannot deny either but we may many times assume that we can we are all Homeward bound. Wasn't it the first vision that Ellen White had? This straight pathway. And God's children were walking on it. And there was a light that illuminated the way for us to go. And some wanted to were more had a mere curiosity to see where the light was coming from and not walking by faith and they tripped and fall we are homeward bound acts of the apostles uh, homeward bound book page 94 sanctification is not the work of a moment an hour a day but of a lifetime. It is not gained by a happy flight of feeling, but is the result of constantly dying to sin and constantly living for Christ. Wrongs cannot be righted, nor reformations wrought in the character by feeble, intermittent efforts. You do a little thing here and that, more or less. No. It is only by long, persevering effort, sore discipline, and stern conflict that we shall overcome. Amen. We know not, pay attention to this, we know not one day how strong will be our conflict the next. How many of you here know exactly what you will suffer tomorrow morning? What will happen? So why not be ready today? Be ready now. For whatever it may be. We all know we are all here. It has happened many times before in your lives, in your life, and in my life, in our life, that we are all fine and good and in church, and we do not know what. Oh. So long as Satan reigns, doesn't he reign in this world? We shall have self to subdue, besetting sins to overcome. So long as life shall last, there will be no stopping place, no point which we can reach and say, I have fully attained. I'm fine now. I can lower my guards. Sanctification is the result of lifelong obedience. May the Lord continue to bless you as you let him continue to lead and to bless you with the development of Christ's character in your character. Before we pray, let me just make this one appeal. I shared with uh, some of you leaders, active and not active, a form for you to add a goal for next year. I see that you have many goals here and they are taking place. 
women's ministry breakfast last week, uh, two weekends ago, and uh, community services. Today here we had our treasurer, all, um, Orville, he made an appeal to you and explained to you this, the process of stewardship and what you desire to be a blessing here or to the conference. He made it clear. Um, here's an appeal. Why not put in mind as a goal, for example, this stewardship treasury that like a treasurer like, or, or any other one, we will do a stewardship weekend per semester where the treasurer will preach that sermon and we can even have a guest speaker. I can help you to work on the schedule to make it happen. One stewardship per semester as a goal. That's it. One community service, social meetings for a goal. We plan to do the bonfire at Anita's house on the fall and we want to get, we always get 20 people. We want to get 30 people. We want to, to begin with reading the Bible. That's a goal. Simple. Uh, elders and I, and we work with things like such as, let's do a spiritual revival. And do and bring someone like once, once for the, the spring and one in the fall. Two spiritual revival. We will bring speakers like Stephen Bohr. We got him. We got we got him on 2021 to go to a church there as a prayer ministry coordinator to uh, in New Bedford, Mass. And there are other speakers. Even I would say I, I love him. I know him personally. My wife knows him personally from back ba back way in the Colombia, in Colombia. Um, he taught there at the school in Colombia many years ago when we all had nice hair in our, on our heads those days. Um, well, uh, for example, uh, I love him, but we can get someone like him or even better. Why not set that goal? Spring spiritual revival, fall spiritual revival. We have uh, goals that uh, um, Sarah had put in place, uh, Nadine has, we have uh, Gary and others. I gave you the form. Go home, pray about it, write that one goal, take a picture, and send it to me. I'll put it together. But I challenge the elders here to do one spiritual revival, reformation in the spring and one in the fall. Where we will bring speakers that are like best. Let's do it. If we put it in paper, we see it, we will plan, and it will happen. And put the things that you, are, you have been doing already. The health with Germain, health uh, seminars and the, the idea of those, those. Put those. Put it down. Take, take a picture and send it to me. These are for church leaders and for non-church leaders as well. We had a, a seminar here on uh, investment, on um, uh, real estate and so on. Do you want to do another one next semester or the year before? 2000. 24, 20, 25, 26. I want to do it one per semester. Put it down, send it to me. Let's have the picture of to follow. Let's do it together. Today. Today, go home, write one. You can write that one line in two minutes. A blessing, a prayer of blessing to all of you. Let us pray now. Lord God, my Father, my Lord, my Maker, my Creator, our Redeemer, our maker. Here are your precious sons and daughters known in the book of Revelation as the saints of the Most High. Lord God, bless each one of them. With your presence, O oh Lord, every single moment of their lives. Seal them, seal all of us with you, O oh Lord, for your soon coming, that we may all be ready and none of us be missing. When the call, when the, the roll is called up yonder, that we may say, present, Lord. I, my name will be there. Our names will be there. I ask you this, O oh Lord, in the blessed and most, most holy name of thy beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Don't forget my challenge. Do it. It will be a blessing to 
all of us.